All right, so what's going on guys and welcome to another video on the E46. Before we jump into the blood, sweat and tears part of the operation here, I actually get to go through uh, my assumptions of what I'm gonna use product wise and kind of show off some of the cool new gear I have. And uh, that is really, I think part of the reason I like detailing is there's always like really cool stuff you can use and ways to like improve your process. So I'm gonna show you the products that I plan on using because I'm making some assumptions and I'm also going to do a test spot. So that'll be interesting. The test spot actually takes a little bit of time, but it's worth it because it gives you an idea of what the heck you're gonna be doing. You can't just slap the polisher on there and hope that everything goes well. Okay, so before I jump into like the polishing stuff, I want to mention um, products that you wanna be using in between polishing, before, after polishing, or if you need to wipe down a panel that has dust on it or whatever. There's a few different things you can use. You can use isopropyl alcohol uh, because what you want to use is something that sort of preps the surface. You don't want to use detail spray because usually that leaves some sort of gloss or it leaves something behind, um, some sort of protection behind. And when you're polishing, you literally want the paint to be as naked as possible. So you don't want to use anything that will leave a nice scent or anything weird on the surface at all. So they have different products. My go-to is CarPro Eraser. This is like isopropyl alcohol. I think really the biggest difference is that it actually soaks up um, the oils or maybe some of the dirt. So it's a little bit more efficient if you are going to use it. And it's not that expensive. I mean, this bottle will last you a long, long time. I have this old bottle of Gion Prep, which is literally the exact same thing, but I just figured I would show it to you. And the towels I like to use, and I've actually not changed my towels for this part of the process in, I don't think since I started, like once I got these, they just worked really well. These, I feel like are called like Uber something towels. Um, I'll have to put a link in the description, but I have these, and I also have the green ones. I think these are three or 400 GSM, which is a little fluffy, but when you're polishing, I mean, I don't know, I'd rather be a little too fluffy than not enough. So it's a little um, you know, thicker than uh, some of the people like, but I like these, they're really reliable. Uh, link in the description, click on those links. If you wanna buy something, I get a little commission. So um, the other thing is tape, kind of jumping around here, but I have a few different selections of tape. This is um, something that, it's painter's tape. And I don't normally like to use this except for on surfaces that maybe I don't care about because it does peel up pretty good, but it's not very moldable. Like you can't bend it. It is thicker. So if you are extra worried about a surface, um, it's gonna be thicker than um, like something like this, but this you can kind of bend and pull and it's nice to go around a turn. This, you're gonna have to cut different pieces and it's not that fun. So maybe if you just need to do like an exhaust tip, like the top, just put a piece of this on it. Um, not that it really matters, but that's what I like. And then this is also, is this 3M? I don't know, I'll put, I'll put all these in the description. I don't have a huge preference. This is nice, but it is thin, uh, but it does stretch. So you kind of have different, I don't know, options that you want to think about. So anyways, that's the tape. I know tape is really silly, but um, it's, part of the process here. I spent 35 minutes taping yesterday. So um, we're doing a two-step process here. And I know like for a fact it needs two steps. I mean, it's just impossible to make the paint look the way I want it to look in one step. There's no secret sauce or formula. You're gonna have to put in 15 to 25 hours to make it look good. That's just the way it works. So if you have something special at home that you think is better than this, then you can use that. But I can almost guarantee it's not gonna look the way that I would want it to look. So, we're gonna start most aggressive, pretty much, to least aggressive. I have something called Menzerna FG400. This is stuff I've had for a very long time. This is like my version of like a sledgehammer. You can use uh, like Meguiar's 110 or 101. Um, that is very aggressive as well. The other two cutting um, compounds that I might use, um, the Sonex Cut Max, I've actually only used this once at SEMA, and that doesn't really count. So I actually bought a little bottle. I am going to assume that this will work for this car, but the paint on the E39 was extremely hard, and uh, this was almost like not even aggressive enough for it, so I had to change up the pad. So there is a chance that this is not aggressive enough, but this is what I'm assuming I'm gonna use. 
And I also have Jeskar Correcting Compound, which is really, really nice to work with, but it doesn't cut as much, um, at least when I used it. I mean, maybe I'm not using it right, but it just seems like this is aggressive, but not as aggressive as these two, uh, from what I understand. I only have one bottle for my um, polishing, and this is Sonax Perfect Finish. This is a favorite of a lot of guys, and it's just really easy. It actually does a little bit of cutting, but it finishes really nice, especially if you put it on a yellow pad, which I have plenty of. So let's get into the pads. Let's go back to cutting really quick. Um, the cutting pads, my favorite are the Meguiar's. Um, see there, uh, these are the cutting discs and I have them in all different sizes because I have my polishers over there, which I'll get into in just a second. Um, and I also have these little, actually, I don't know, these might actually be finishing, but they look very simple. For finishing, as I mentioned, I've got the yellow pads here. These are the Rupes uh, yellow foam. I also have um, Meguiar's finishing pads or uh, polishing pads, whichever ones these are. As you can see, these are a little thicker. Um, if you wanna see the difference here, see how one is a little bit thicker than the other. These ones are thicker. So these are the finishing ones. I think these finish really well. I almost like these to finish more than the uh, yellow ones, to be honest with you guys. The yellow is nice, but I don't know. I just kinda like it. So. That is the plan on the products. Uh, we can get into the polishing station that I made uh, right now. All right, so we've got something that's kind of a dream for me is having like my detailing cart set up with my gear and I can just grab what I want, polish the car, get into a tight spot or whatever, get it on the car. And that's just what I love. Having stuff close, easy to work with, hopefully you don't get dizzy here, makes everything so much quicker and easier and you'll form your process uh, once you do it a few times. I'm not a pro at all, but this is just what I like to do. And I think generally it's a decent guide for most people unless they do it for a living, then they're probably looking at me thinking I'm stupid. But um, this is uh, my newest polisher um, and uh, this is the Rupes LHR 15, uh, but this is the Mark three most recent version of the LHR 15. So this is the Mark three, um, really nice. I used to use a Porter cable 7424 for many, many years. You can use stuff like that. So if you're gonna ask me what is the best polisher, I'll tell you, try to get one of these secondhand or get a Mark one or a Mark two secondhand. If you can refurbish whatever, pay two, three, whatever, $100. You'll have it for so many years. Unless you polish cars like every other day, you'll be fine with a, you know, a secondhand product uh, if it's in good shape and you'll be fine. So that's what I recommend. This is a 75E, which is a 12 millimeter throw. That one is a 15 millimeter throw. I don't know if I mentioned that, but this is a nice one for getting into smaller areas. You might say, well, what the heck do you need? Like a big one and then that one's slightly smaller. Well, when you're working around areas, especially like maybe even here, it's definitely easier to have. You can maneuver the big one, but if you have the small one, use the small one, especially when you have a lip like here that's coming up. See how this is like coming up? This is way more appropriate of a size pad, in my opinion, than the big one. That one would be much harder to manage, at least for me. If you're a pro, maybe you can do it better than me, but I can't do it. So that's why I just bought that, because I'm a noob. So anyways, this is, the last thing I have is the Hybrid Nano, which is really sick. And actually, this is on the rotary setting. I should have the, uh, the, the uh, I think it has like an eight millimeter throw on it or a 10 millimeter throw. Um, this is rotary because it is uh, in a fixed position. So if you're doing something with this in the rotary setting, you want to be much more careful. Uh, this is the long neck, but this is really, really, really nice to have. Once you have something like this, you'll wonder how the heck did I live without this? So let me show you. This is not what I'm going to do, but this is just an example. Actually, that was a pretty good version. Explain to me what's easier using a 15 millimeter throw giant polisher or using this right here. Just explain, okay? Obviously that, and then obviously getting in here. 
that giant polisher is not fitting right there. It's not fitting there. It's not fitting up in this corner, especially if you do the rotary, you can get right up there. You gotta be careful, but even right here, boom, 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 done. Um, not that simple, but you guys get the idea. That is the justification for this, which is amazing because it comes with a bunch of different things and you just wonder how you live without it. So um, anyway, so this, these brushes are also very important, of course, because I have them. <laughs> uh, this was my original brush I've had for a little while, uh, but this one is nice because it has a little knife area that helps you butter the pad and smooth out this. And then you can, of course, rough up the uh, fibers. Last thing we're gonna talk about is lights really briefly. This is a scan grip. Um, this is actually kind of old. It's a little beat up. I'm a little embarrassed about how much I've beat this thing up, but um, I use it a lot. So it has two settings and then it has a different color setting. It has a little hook. It's just really bright and really nice to maneuver. It also has a magnet, which is pretty cool. This is a scan grip line light. And this is really cool, especially for the inside of a car, the attachment I have right now, it can hang on stuff. You have different attachments you can put it on. Um, but even if I were to, you know, put it on my detailing cart and, you know, face it right there, when I'm polishing, I have like a focused light. It's all about being able to uh, alter and focus the light. So this is really nice. It is rechargeable right there. And uh, there's different attachments. I really like it. It's actually like, especially like under the hood or whatever, you can just attach it under the hood or you can attach it inside. This is actually like a really, really nice thing to have. The bucket is actually pretty important um, for dusting off your polishing pads. Get some water around the sides of the bucket and then you know, once you uh, rinse your pads off when you're uh, going between panels, it's just really easy. All of the, the polished dirt and residue, the polish um, dust and stuff kind of goes in there. So that's why I have the bucket. And then last but not least, this doesn't really count, but it's just emphasizing how important lighting is. This is like an Amazon special or something, and there's nothing crazy about it. It's not some $900 fancy light but it's literally very, very helpful to have, especially when you need to focus light. Like what I do is I shine it on the car and then I'll stand right here and I'll be able to see everything. Like you guys can see exactly what I'm looking at. So that is why something like that is really nice. Um, I have them faced up right now just for the sake of the video, but you guys get the idea. <laughs>